When it comes to clothes shopping, I'm the perfect customer. I'll buy anything if I think it's gonna make me look cool or feel better. This one time I was in LA, I walked into the shop and a mannequin was wearing these cool pants and I thought if it looks cool on the mannequin, they're gonna look pretty cool on me. So I tried them on, came out, looked in front of the mirror, I looked ridiculous, way too big for me and the crotch came down to my knees. I was about to take them off, but then the guy working there, he was like, dude, those pants are banging, man. I was like, are you serious? The, the crotch is quite big. And then he started dancing in my face. He was like, man, those pants are awesome. I've never seen anybody look so good. I was like, is that, is that why you're dancing? He's like, yeah. Uh, you look so good, I just can't contain myself. I gotta dance. And he danced as he held my hand, walked me to the counter, I swiped my card, put my pin in, I got the receipt. As soon as I got the receipt, he stopped dancing and walked away, and no one's ever danced when I've worn those pants since. I got ripped off, and now I'm stuck with those pants. Like I said, I'm the perfect customer. I'll fall for anything. Welcome to Frugal by The Pineapple Project. I'm Nazim Hussain, and like a lot of us, I like my clothes. I'm not embarrassed to say, I like looking good. You look good, you feel good. When I'm on stage, being a comedian, or when I'm on TV, I need to look my best, yeah? Clothes are a big part of what I spend my money on. And we all wanna look cool, and we wanna look cool whilst looking like we're not trying to look cool, don't we? That's, that's the aim of the game. Nothing, why do you need to buy new clothes? Just buy your older sister's t-shirts. They'll fit you now. She's grown up. But too embarrassed for Spice Girls now, Nazim. I thought you wanted to tell everyone. Mom, shut up. A lot of people listen to this podcast. And I'm not in high school anymore, okay? I don't have to keep wearing my sister's clothes. Anyway, Australians spend a lot on fashion. $16 billion in 2020, which works out to be more than 27 kilos in textiles per person every year. That's wild. And here's something even worse. Every year, we also throw out 23 kilos of clothes to landfill. But when we chuck out those clothes, what we're really doing is basically throwing away money. And how do we continuously get into this pickle? By buying clothes all the time. Yep, you know what I'm talking about. Every time I go to work, I usually walk out with some new clothes. Wait, you shop every day you work? Yeah. How often do you work? Time. Like, I only work like four days, three days a week, oh, so. So you shop three, four times a week? Yeah. And do you shop online as well? Yes. 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 Too much again, too much. So, and what about you? Do you shop? Oh, yeah, all the time. <laughs> How, when do you find yourself buying clothes? When it gets Facebook targeted ads. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but all the time, pretty much. Like how, this, this is a great shirt, by the way. Yeah, this is an expensive one. How much can I, how much do you spend on that? $380. Woo. Like when I walk into an op shop and I find a good find there, that actually makes me really happy. Because the other day, two weeks ago, I found these pens and I bought them for $5 and then I found the receipt in the pocket and they had cost another person $500. Boo, are you serious? Yes, and those type of finds just make me feel very happy. Actually, today we're also shopping to procrastinate homework, so... Yeah. What, what's the homework you got? I do like a design course, so I'm procrastinating designing things. Just we found like 15 year olds, yeah, but no, that's why. <laughs> but do you need to kind of, like, how, how constantly do you need to keep like updating your look? Whenever you go through a period of just feeling bored, yeah. and then you kind of like, I'm just going to revamp myself. So it could be like every two weeks, it could be every three months. I am guilty of this. Sometimes when I have a man crush on someone, after I see them, I'll go out and get the same haircut as them. I'll also start talking like them, and then I'll buy the exact same outfit as them. Because I just want to be them. Well, someone who's broken free from this pressure to buy cheap new clothes and then just chuck them is Claire Press. She's a sustainable fashion journalist and is the author of a book and hosts a podcast, both called Wardrobe Crisis. Claire isn't anti-fashion, she actually loves clothes and dressing up, but she thinks that we are being conned by the fashion industry, starting with the idea that buying clothes is really just a way of treating ourselves, aka retail therapy. <laughs> Um, it makes me laugh because I actually just think it's a big lie. This, it's this whole idea that we can make ourselves feel better. We can fill the gaping void within by, by shopping, by buying something new. And it's, it's not true, is it? It really isn't. We've been sold a lie. But Claire, when I go shopping, if I buy something that I like, I do feel a bit better. Yeah, but for how long? Oh, uh, <laughs> you know, until, I, I don't know. Um, hmm. 
Sometimes it's a bit of a pick me up. Well, look, I'm a fashion fan. I work in fashion. I love clothes and I've certainly bought stuff that has made me feel better. But what I would argue is that a lot of it is that kind of sugar rush, especially when we're talking about cheap, fast fashion. And the the thrill doesn't last very long. We've just buying way more clothes than we used to. I think it's in the 1930s. Women used to have nine outfits on average. That's the entire like in wardrobe. Total, that's in their wardrobe. Wow. And I'm not sure how, how many we have now, but I do know that we buy about 60 items of clothing per year on average. That's crazy. The fast fashion business model is basically more and more and more, more trend driven and bringing the consumer into the shop more often. So it used to be that customers came in once a season and looked at, hey, what's new for winter? But under the fast fashion system, brands want you to come in maybe twice a week and find new product. That's the key. Well, when we talk about fast fashion, we're talking about clothes that are cheap to make and therefore cheap to buy, um, but aren't necessarily good quality. Look, I always like to say somebody pays the price for too cheap. If something is very, very cheap, you have to question how how they've managed to cut those corners. Now, it could be that they're using cheaper fabric, also that it's been made more shoddily, so it's going to fall apart more quickly, less stitches involved. So it's about a reduced quality. And what, one of the things I always like to get people thinking is that it's not just young women, those of cliche, who spend on fast fashion. The speed of the industry is affecting all kind of areas of the market. So it's children's clothes, it's menswear, it's sports gear. It's just this kind of rampant uptick in the pace of the industry and in the production. I, um, I often think that it's cheaper and it's better for my pocket if I'm just buying stuff that is cheaper. Like a $15 t-shirt is obviously cheaper than a $100 t-shirt that might be better quality, but you know, it's 15 bucks. Isn't that, isn't that better for me in the long run? Well, it depends how often you buy that $15 t-shirt. So I think when we talk about sustainable fashion, people are often, they often worry that it means it's going to cost more and it's more expensive and they can't afford it. And we do need to think about affordability. But I think it's about just monitoring how often you buy. So if you're buying a 15 buck top, but you're buying three of them, you may as well have spent that money on one that was better quality that would have lasted longer and had been produced with greater care. And it's actually just a mindset shift in it. It does. It is asking quite a lot of us because we've grown used to buying this cheap disposable stuff. Mm. So quality over quantity. Can you talk to me about online shopping? Uh, there's lots of deals on there. It's also easy to do. Should we be careful? Is there anything to watch out for? You know, there's no one there coming up to us going, can I help you? That looks great on you. I feel like it's a safer space. Oh, wow. Is that how you see it? That's so interesting. Yeah, because I go, I go into these shops and then someone's just always complimenting me and then they just don't leave me alone and I just feel like to get them to go away, I'll just buy it. And then I end up with a pair of jeans that I kind of like. So do you reckon you feel more in control when you, you've got your phone in your hand and you call the shots. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, no one's bugging me when I'm, on, when I'm on the toilet buying a pair of jeans. But are they though? That's what I'm, so this is what I'm thinking. They are, but it's just more subtle. So, you know, when you leave things in the cart and you don't yeah, you yeah. go away and have a think about it and you always get those notifications. Remember, remember what's there. Or, you know, the algorithms oh, yeah. are monitoring what you're searching and then they're showing you more of the same. So there's quite a lot going on behind the scenes of the online experience. I feel like we're more likely to buy on impulse online. That's a pretty familiar feeling for another Claire. Claire Sherwell wrote in after our first season about money with her pineapple pledge. Back then, she told us she wanted to get on top of how much money she was spending on clothes. But since then, her challenges have changed. She's now got two kids. One of them was only six weeks old when I caught up with her at her house. Claire says it's been hard to live up to her pineapple pledge. I definitely shop as a way of a bit of self-care or just because... And certainly wearing something new does make me feel better. It's something that I go to if I'm feeling a bit stressed or overwhelmed as like a reward um, and certainly... A reward? Yeah. So like if you've, you've done a good day of life... <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, yes. And so well, I feel like at the moment with a newborn, like that sense of just needing something for myself. Oh, you just pushed out a person. <laughs> That's huge. You should get a T-shirt for that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but just that sense of like basically my whole life is not for me at the moment. And so just 
trying to find something that is something for me. Um, so clothing is your own personal love language. Do yes. You? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you do you online shop or? Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. One hundred percent. You just said that like <laughs> like you're trying to get to a shop at the moment. I can barely leave the house. So I think online shopping at least I can do it in my own time. At the moment, I'm usually doing it in the early hours of the morning because I'm sitting up breastfeeding and everyone else is asleep. So I, it's like my own little time where I can just look <laughs> at random things and doesn't necessarily mean that all those decisions are rational. So you just get on there not knowing what you want to buy. You just go on there. Uh, to no, I usually go looking for something like I might have thought, oh, maybe I need a new, I don't know, jumper because it's starting to get cold. Oh, it's cold at two o'clock in the morning. I need a new jumper. So I might just go looking for that. But then you end up buying... Something else. <laughs> sometimes. Sometimes I get caught if it's like, oh, you've got 10 more dollars and you get free shipping. It's yeah. like, okay, surely I can find something else in here. But um, I'm also very cautious that every time a package arrives, my husband's like, oh, what have you bought now? Oh. <laughs> and so I feel like I need to have um, some kind of rationale yeah. for the shopping in case he does ask like why do you need that or what are, what are, what are you buying now um sometimes i just quickly <laughs> put it straight into the water but you have to hide the box well and my daughter is now quite a, she observes new things so she snitches on you well the other day she's like is that a new bag mom i was like shut up <laughs> oh my god you gotta treat her you gotta you gotta pay her hush lollies um how often how many times a week does a parcel arrive uh, at least once a week at the moment, yeah. But in response to that, I reckon I've made about 300 bucks reselling things. Really? Yeah. So, so um, I feel like every time I buy something new, I need to try and get rid of something else. So do you just walk around the house and look for stuff to sell? I just look in my wardrobe and think I haven't worn that in ages. So it sounds, yeah, it sounds like you're, you're pretty aware that shopping gives you some sort of pleasure, yeah. makes you feel good, new clothes makes you feel good. Obviously, when you're going through those rougher patches, you do what you got to do. If you were seeking that same sort of feeling or that pick-me-up, are there other ways that you could achieve that? The other way I get a bit of self-care, I guess, is through exercise. And I haven't been able to get back to that yet, but that's kind of the next, um, in the next kind of six weeks, I should be able to get back to a bit of that. And I think um, I've become more conscious of it. So certainly I think when I first wrote in um, with my Pineapple Pledge, it was definitely something that, I could see was a behaviour, but I wasn't as aware of it as I am now. And if I've got <laughs> the manpower and brain space to go, okay, why are you doing this? Maybe you need to go for a walk or something. Then, yeah, I can do that. But when it's 2am and I've been up for four hours. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's so much easier to look back on your behaviour and go, oh, yeah, I was definitely feeling impulsive. But when you're actually feeling impulsive, yes. to pause is yeah. hard. Yes, yeah, it is really hard. Um, well, and it's so much easier to just buy the top and be feel happy about it. This is the thing. The stuff we buy isn't just about having clothes that make us look nice. It's also about how we feel as we make that purchase. The dopamine rush. Kind of like cocaine. Or chocolate, in my case. But that shopping buzz doesn't last, though. And then we get bored of what we bought, and then we go and buy another thing, and then we get bored of that, and then we buy another thing, just to try and chase that first high. So what does my frugal friend Dave think about all this? He's in his early 30s. He writes a blog called Strong Money Australia and buys as little as possible so that he can use that extra money to live a more relaxed life. I just try and buy stuff that I feel is going to last a long time and that I won't get sick of wearing because, I mean, there's no point buying something if you're going to wear it like once or for like three months and then you might get sick of it. So try and imagine if you can be satisfied with those clothes for a long period of time because that's where a lot of the cost comes from is people replacing their clothes all the time. So if you can buy stuff that you, that you know almost 100% certain that you're going to enjoy wearing for a long time, then that goes a long way to improving the, the financial kind of outcome. Do you participate in – have you had clothes swaps? Mm, nah, I'm not, I'm not aware of that. You want to swap some clothes with me? Maybe. Oh, How tall are you? Might be the same size. How tall are you? I don't know, five eight or something. I'm five nine. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, you can wear. You can, I'll give you some of my clothes. All right, we'll switch them up. Switch them up. What do you wear? What's your style? Right, I'm wearing t-shirt and some shorts. That's it. 
Oh, I didn't say uh, I didn't say what are you wearing now, but oh. this this call's become sexy. I thought this call was kind of changing <laughs> direction there for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> So there you go. You can try a clothes swap with some friends. Make a night of it. Win-win for everybody. Just make sure they're your friends and that you have their permission to take their clothes. Otherwise, I think it's called theft. Okay, fast fashion is bad and I shouldn't shop impulsively, but how can I still look good and keep up with all my man crushes without wasting all my money and destroying the planet? Claire Press from The Wardrobe Crisis has some great suggestions. If there was like a little roadmap to being more sustainable with your fashion choices, begin by being more mindful. And it doesn't have to be a whole meditation, but just really think before you shop. Then consider buying one better quality item that you're going to keep for longer. And then think about secondhand, think about sharing, think about repairing and repairability. And I think... Honestly, if we did those things, we would really change this game. So it's not about not shopping, but it is about thinking before you shop and then making the most of what you have. And one of the main things I've learned today is that when I think I'm saving money by buying cheap clothes, I actually end up spending way more in the long run. Just remember, the world is trying to convince us that we need to buy new clothes all the time. But if you don't buy into that, you can save your money for the things that really bring you joy. But I guess that's the hard part, isn't it? Figuring out what truly gives us joy. Not someone else. Not what a company tells us will make us happy or what they define as joy. I mean, what is joy? I think I've experienced it. Am, am I happy? I think I'm happy. Anyway, that's a rabbit hole and this is the end of the episode. Thank you for listening. You can find me on Instagram at Nazim Hussein or on Facebook. Please subscribe, follow, review us. All the stars, please. Tell your friends. Text them. Or knock on their door and tell them personally, face to face, about the Pineapple Project. Here's a script. Hi, insert friend's name. Do you want to live a better life? Save some money? Listen to this. Nazim Hussain with some advice about how to be frugal and fashionable at the same time. And there'll be more on this tomorrow when we look at the challenges of op shopping when you're plus sized.